Oh, oh man, what's up, guys? We back. It's really the time. It's really the time. And I'm your homeboy. Cookbook in it. Cookbook in it. Yeah. It's really the time And if you're ready to get busy I might just make your head get dizzy Yeah, y'all, what's up? It's your boy Cookbook Welcome to another episode of Really Though And I know what you're saying to yourself right now You're saying this I rock with Cookbook every time He comes around he blows my mind. I rock with cookbook every time he comes around. He blows my mind. I rock with cookbook every time he comes around. He blows my mind. I rock with cookbook every time he comes around. He blows my mind. Really though. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Really Though with your homeboy. It's me, it's your boy, Cookbook in the house. Thank you as always for rocking with me. Right here on Really Though, brought to you by PlatformCollection.com. Platform Collection where you can find all kinds of good hip-hop stuff. Videos, essays, interviews, and especially the podcasts. We specialize in podcasts. We got so many podcasts. Podcasts are coming out of our mother freaking asses. So check it out, y'all. We got On the Road with 60 East. Crappy Awesome. We got 2MX Hologram. 2MX Hologram Radio. We got Proof of Life Radio. We got Status Escalate. Man, we got so many podcasts, I can't even believe it. But you're listening to mine right now. Really, though. Yo, I got a lot of new music coming out, man. I wanted to let you guys know I'm doing three projects this year, and I'm really excited. The first one, and I'm going to announce it right here. I don't think I've announced it publicly yet. I'm finishing up an EP with my homeboy Flynn from L.A. Symphony, bro. This music is ill. It's like a complete departure from my last uh, record with Evidence, man. I guess the best way to describe the sound is, well, I like to call it Fun the Jewels. <laughs> so it's got that Run the Jewels type of beat with that LA Symphony fun on it. And man, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Me and Flynn are having a blast getting in the studio, recording it. Recording around our baby schedules, our children's schedules. Shout out to Flynn and his new baby. Shout out to Pigeon John and his new baby. Then after that, I'm doing another installment of the CBEP series with a producer that you guys will not be disappointed in. You will be excited to hear. But I'm not announcing the producer yet, but I will. And on top of all of that, I'm working on a full-length album that I'm dropping at the end of the year. It's a real special album. It's going to mean a lot to me, man. I feel like it's going to be part of my legacy, if you will. The title of that album is Jason Soto Was Here. You know, like when you see on the bathroom walls when somebody was like, hey, Frank Jones was here, whatever. That album's called Jason Soto Was Here, and I'm working on it now. (laughs) It'll be out at the end of the year, bro. So I hope you'll be rocking with your boy, Cookbook. Yeah, man. Today's show is... If you ever wanted to get gems from an episode of Really, though, today is the day. For you to tune in and get gems. Yo, we have a lot of fun around here. We clown around. I might play you a song or two. But the mission of really, though, is edutainment. Come here, you have fun, you get your hip-hop on. But you also gain those gems. You get that knowledge for your life. That you can apply to your business. Your music career. uh, Your entrepreneurial pursuits. Man, I'm all about helping you guys know that I coach people. I life coach them. I success coach them. That's real talk. I counsel them. And that's what the purpose of the podcast is. Matter of fact, I have another seminar coming up in May that I want to tell you guys about. 
If you want to learn how to take massive action in your life to see drastic change, then you're going to want to be a part of this seminar. Just like I did earlier in the, you know, a few months back, I did it on goal setting. This time we're talking about drastic change. And I want you to be a part of that. It's free. All you got to do is email me, cookbookings at gmail.com, cookbookings at gmail.com, and type in the subject line, drastic change, I'm in. And I'll count you as signed up for the seminar. I'll be announcing the exact date and time very, very soon, but just know that it's in May, most likely the second week or third week of May. So make sure you hit me, cookbookings at gmail.com. Anyway, we got a special guest on the show today. His name is Chris Los. Now, none of you guys probably know him unless you live in the IE and you listen to Old School 93.5. He's rocking the afternoon ride every day from 2 to 5 p.m. He's an online radio personality. I've always known him. I've known him for a long time, and I've always known him to be a radio dude. But he corrected me on this interview, and you'll hear it in a minute. He's so much more than a, a radio on-air personality. He's a philanthropist. He's a speaker. He's put together programs which teach kids valuable skills. He's just giving back to the community all over. But most of all, the reason why he's here is because he is a positive and successful person. And he wants to tell you guys how successful he is. Make sure you check him out. He's got a great series of positive, motivational, and very instructional YouTube videos his page is Chris Los Media on YouTube. So just go to YouTube, search out Chris Los Media, and you'll find him. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I want to introduce you to an old friend of mine named Chris Los. Really though. 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 What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Really Though with your host, Cookbook, your homeboy, your big brother, your mentor, your coach. The guy that just likes to hang out with you, man. And today I got a special treat for you. You may not think it's a special treat until you get to know this brother. On the show today, I got a long time, long time good friend of mine. We go way back to when it was Young Cookbook, literally still in school trying to get his raps off, doing little rap shows and stuff. And I ended up in his city and I met him and his sister and they just started hanging out with us. His name is Chris Los. Give it up right now for Chris Los out there. I know you can't hear him cheering. But That's they all cheering, good, man. man. I hear him, bro. We got so much history, dude. It's so great I to know. see you, man. It's crazy, man. For those of you who don't know who Chris Los is, I'm going to let him break down who he is. But this dude has been uh, killing it in the music and the radio game for literally many, many years. Like 20 something, like, right? Yeah, 20 plus, bro. It's kind of so, crazy. So I'm having him on as an expert. And you guys already know how this goes, right? So as an expert, I think he's going he's gonna to be able to nail like all the questions I have for him in a correct way. But Chris, the way we start the show, man, uh, I always start with the most important question. I don't save it till the end. I, I start Bet. with it, okay? Bet. And I think you're just the guy to answer this question, all right? Yeah. You ready? You feel up Absolutely, to the challenge? Absolutely, okay. man. Really, though? Oh, man, I've been waiting, dude. And, and, and for those of you listening to this man's <laughs> podcast right now, I got to jump in and tell you, if, <laughs> if, if, as, as you get to know this, brother, man, like, you know, one day should you ever uh, get a voicemail from this man... <laughs> This is the, by the way, I just want you to know this is the longest answer to that question I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, Go this man's voicemail game. Oh, uh, yeah. You got one of the nice ones, too. You, some Good of my homies get leaves the, the like. Yo, he going <laughs> to leave you with a voicemail that's going to make your day, have you laughing, and you're going to call the man back right away yeah. with a tear or two in your eye. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's your answer? Uh, no, let's go to the question first. Okay, the yeah. question is, really, though? Oh, that's the question. That's the question. <laughs> really, though? You got it. That's the answer, yo. That is the answer. The question is really, though? And the answer is really, though. We can rap right now. Oh, Let's get man. out of here. This well, guy's the hard like... part is done. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. People are always like, they are, I get all these. Yeah, no doubt. Of course. I'm like, well, it's even easier than that, bro. <laughs> But yeah, man, the voicemail thing, I have a lot of fun doing that. I get I get a lot of people, you know. Man. I, I don't even honestly probably remember half the things I said to you, man. I just go out on these tangents, bro. It's great. <laughs> I do it on voicemails. I do it on the podcast. But dude, you've been I a character since I've known you, bro. Like, you know, I know he introduced us, but man, yeah. man this dude go, like, I was, 
I was trying to get into radio, I think, when I we think, met. I feel like, honestly, since I've known you, you've been like, I'm, I'm going to be on the radio. Like, But why don't you like give them your history, and then you could incorporate how we know each other from that, from your perspective. Yeah. I just remember you, like, Duarte shows, yeah. and like, this dude. You know, the Dark Dan Rue showed up, him and his sister hanging out. <laughs> That's all I remember, yo. Yeah, it was, um, it was, I, I was, I think I was trying to get into the beat at the time, or oh, I was okay. trying to get my internship uh-huh. or something like that. And because I remember getting it and yeah. then seeing you guys at a show somewhere and then connecting with Flynn. Right. And then being like, bro, I made it. I got a little internship at the beat. Dope. Da, 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 and I'm man. sure Flynn had a big crush on your sister. Oh, man. Yo. That seems right. His MO. Hey, my sister was <laughs> my like, well, it was got a low key crushing on Flynn, too. I was like, oh. hey, hold on now. Hey, Maybe that was ahead. the plug. <laughs> that was, that the, was plug. the connection. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it was real. Um, and, and that was the grind. Like, so I, I loved I loved it because I got to see you guys and what you were doing grow as well yeah and how you guys were growing music you guys were all this you guys were this fresh eclectic dope yeah. group of dudes that was Thank just you. nothing alike but yeah. all the same at the same time yeah true and it was so cool man i love yeah. the energy like just being in the studio and watching y'all create and you there know, was something magical about that time man i have fond memories and you know what i'll tell you a quick thing we actually did a uh we did a 15 year anniversary album in 2014 that a lot of people kind of slept on we put it out at the end of 2014 and that was 15 years damn and uh we we were trying to do the album that's it came out in december because if we didn't make 2014 mm-hmm. there's no purpose in a 15 yeah. year anniversary that now it's past right yeah. we we're trying the whole year to get the album done and uh we were you know trying to go you know, with our daily lives now, right, kids right. and Everybody different things, families, like and families yeah. yeah, it was becoming difficult. So we made the decision. We said, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to shut our lives down mm-hmm. and just. We were gonna go to we were gonna go to Vegas originally and just set up in a hotel room and just record. And we're like, can't go to Vegas, dude. Right, like, right. we're gonna get nothing. Right, right, right. Gonna go to Vegas. Out, what are you yeah. gonna do in Vegas, right? <laughs> then we were gonna literally. I don't know who said it. We were gonna go to Colorado and try to book shows and do. I was like, well, then we're doing a tour. If we book shows, we're too distracted. We're mm-hmm. not gonna get the music yeah. done. So believe it or not, uh, because of my homeboy. I don't know if you know him. He he's he knows. Chris, uh, Curtis King and all them, but uh, MC Prototype, he has a studio out here. Yeah. So we we said, I, and he's a really good friend of mine, and I knew he would let us use his studio. So literally, we left our homes and we came to beautiful Ontario, California, bro. I booked us uh, like on Hotels.com or some just some cheap hotel. Yeah. And we just left our families for like four days and just four days recorded the album, man. That's and you know what's crazy, bro? Uh, there was certain moments one specific moment when that what you were talking about that energy Mm -hmm. it came back in the room man and i felt so happy at that moment because truthfully i didn't want to do another record yeah i was like i'm out here building this solo career man i ain't trying to go backwards and it's hard it's hard it's Mm -hmm. like doing a hard time when you're in the la simp man it's hard but that magic it just i wanted to tell you that because you were there for some of that early magic it came back it was in the room and i was like oh this is so it was so like it was yeah man like one of my fondest memories of hip-hop was seeing you guys thank you man thank you bro Oh, yeah, thanks for coming to my crib, man. We got to spark the barbecue, up, but I think we need to spark a cell. Yeah, where that carne asada I think I got that, man. Pigeon, bring me in, Pigeon. They call him Puerto Rican lover. Yeah. The Irish car bomb. Uh-huh. Good look. Oh. Get on the mic and sound the <laughs> alarm. C double O K, B double O K, me and Uno O K, fresh and okie doke. <laughs> you see me in the jam, you screaming, no way. Uh-huh. I flee the scene like my man Kaiser Soze, yeah. Come on, wave your hands. Who's the gravy man? Who's the gravy man? Oh, that was tight, though. That was tight, though. Yo, but who's next up, man? Flynn, bring somebody else All right, all right, check it out. It's the Paramount Pirate High School track coach. Original catfish, hook them with the flow. Opinionated and often debated. Punks get loved on G's like me get hated. That's just a side salad to go with all this greatness. Paramount's finest, rep it till I'm famous. Maybe that'll never happen, but I'm better than most Americans at rapping. Is a P 
pigeon. What? A pigeon is a bird. Okay. What's pigeon, John? Huh? A Christian nerd. Been hearing it since the good life. And even if the hood might diss, I'm gonna spit and kiss them all good night and wake them in the new light. Take them all the new heights. Even Killer Majero looks tiny when I write. Well, all right. Pigeon John, yo, you oh, healing okay. them? Oh, now they call me back and say, hey, we feeling them? Hey, yo, who's next? JP's let us know something, JP. Turn it up louder, let the beat knock Indiana Jones is about to rock Me, I'm Flint Adam, yep, that's the name Born in Indiana, but now L.A.'s my domain And I rock sushi, love me some sushi I roll a Jeep, never had a Suzuki A man of many hats and just as many kicks Rolling down the street, do a double kick flip Oh, you know he cold as Jack Frost I present to you the big homie, Uno Mas Yes, indeed, I'm chillin', same as it ever was Still got these heads talking with these lyrics that I buzz Full thrust, sorta of reckless, I keep my train moving. Call me the conductor on tracks that be groovin' Uno Mas Mexican, and I really mean it Here go my mic, watch me chili bean it His name is Serene, flow smooth and you know it I feel so close to you, can I call you poet? Serene palms flowing back at it again Rocket fly rides with the symphony friends Some ask where you been I moved out to the Midwest Got a wife, son in the house If this calls you to doubt, I'm still nice with mine Go ahead and get brave, homie, cross that line Got the homie that resides in the city of Long Beach Y'all know his name, his name is Jay Beats Yeah, that's me homeboy, I'm still murking them Something like a pip on the stroll, I'm still working them And only came through to get the profit So if you thought something else, boy, then you can stop it But that don't mean a nigga won't rock it Beats represent by the album when I drop it So anyway, so you're, we met each other back then. You're doing the... That was probably... Could have been the time when we were pressing up vinyl. Like Flynn and yep. our manager at the time, Noah, they were real innovative. And they started a label back then and pressed up vinyl. And we would be... Here too. Yeah. You know it, bro. Here too by the bro, t-shirt. Do you know somebody <laughs> not only bought, uh, like kind of jacked the, the URL, EarTube... EarTubeEmpire.com. Yeah. If you go to EarTubeEmpire.com, it's some low-budget rappers that got that and they got our logo. If you go on there, what? our logo, they have that too. I'm hurt. I'm telling you. But anyway, it must have been That's when funny. we were standing out. So we would go like Flynn would take. It was all new to me. I was learning from mm-hmm. these guys. I'm like, we got to do what? Like stand out in front of the beat and wait for like, or power, or all those stations. Yeah. We're going to wait for the Baker Boys. we waiting for whoever's coming out. Whoever comes out this, we give it in vinyl. And we'd be out there. And that, that could be how we met you. Because I remember cold nights yeah. <laughs> standing out there. And yo, would you check our single out? You know? And it was ab- actually, now I absolutely remember it. It was church camp. Oh, really? Bro, I met, I met Flynn and a couple other people. At church camp when I was in high school. Okay. Or just getting out, like right around that time. All right. And that then makes we just sense. stayed in touch because he was just a cool dude and it was just like, oh man. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of our beginning was that. You know, mm-hmm. we kind of, not even really our, be- well, yeah, kind of, we got just swooped up in that. You know, we were always trying to build just in a, just rappers, just yeah. being rappers, but because of our background and we all kind of met in church too mm-hmm. you know the LA Symphony that we just kind of ended up doing shows in that yeah. world too and at the time we're like we'll, we'll rap wherever mm-hmm. anywhere we can and I think it was kind of an advantage doing all those church shows because a lot of dudes who were rapping and didn't have that outlet to do shows like that right. by the time they had a record out or something they were not hot on stage right. whereas we were able to kind of fine tune it and by the time we were doing club stuff we were hot and I, I, I say that with full confidence, 100%. maybe even a little cockiness. Hey, man, I, I'll say this. I saw, um, I think it was for the Root Beer Project, John and Flynn did yeah. whatever. Year. I was in San Diego at the time. Okay. And they did a club over there. And that ill, 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 yeah. ridiculous energy show presence yeah. is not left. That's still there. Uh, you know, I think that's always been all of our strong points, man. And, and I think usually what happens with me, I notice in my solo career, too, is like, 
the moment uh, uh, they hear the record, they like the music, mm -hmm. but when they see me live, that's where I make all my fans because they're like, yo, you're do your, your records are cool, but live? And so I think yeah. that's like the, the, the carrot I've been chasing, or the thing I've been chasing is how to really uh, make get that feeling on record. I don't know if you can, yeah. but I try because that's what seems like people really resonate with me. It's you know hard I mean? to do it. I don't think you can, but I, don't I mean, think you can. If but I yeah. said that as a goal, maybe they catch a little Correct. of that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, I mean, we could talk about me all day because I love myself. Hey man, let's as get you back should. to you though, man. <laughs> Tell us about your journey, your radio, because I want to get into some of the stuff you're doing now. I want to, I want to hear some of your mind states and stuff like that. Because my listeners, you know, they they know this show to be something where they come, they have fun, but they also can glean. Mm -hmm. like information for their lives and stuff like that um so yeah man so you 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 get an internship man you you're hanging out with the la symphony but in yeah. real time you're building this radio thing yeah or really just trying to see if i could fit in man like yeah. at that time radio it was like you were dealing with legends like it was yeah julio g it was you know theo on the radio it was Kevin Nash, PJ Butter, it was... Oh, you dropping those names, right? Yeah, those so are like names like, I grew up with. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at John Lennon and the house party. I'm seeing all these people like, dang, man. Yeah. Like, how am I going to be anything? You know what's this? funny, though? Ever since I've known you and, and heard, like, you got, you got um, dreams to be in radio, I was like, I always knew for sure you were going to make it. One, because of ambition... But mostly because of the voice, homeboy. Word. You got that radio oh, good voice, looking, right? Man. I do radio now, and I know my gravelly voice. I'm like, mm, I don't know if they're going to gel with it. But you, you got that. You got that voice, homeboy. I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. That 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 whatever it was voice thing almost messed me up, though, early in the radio. Really? Because it was me listening to the radio, hearing like Theo, hearing. Oh, so you was trying to do that. Theo. Hey, what's up? Whoa. Hey, ladies, you know how we do. Call it in. Yeah, girl. Too heavy. Call it in. I was on it. I was on it. I was you was trying to get I that was low? Dimming the lights and hey, trying to get that Like whole. candles and stuff? Hey, for all the ladies out there driving home, Chris Lowe Scott, you girl. Hit me up. And that was it, dude. Like, and it was bad, bro. Like, to where uh, it was like you start hearing, all of a sudden, I'm like, man, what am I doing? You bro, know? it's no different from rappers, though. Like, when you start, like, I, clearly, I started as a kid rapping. So who, who did, I didn't have a voice yet. Right. But I just rapped exactly who I listened to. So if you hear me, like, mid to late 90s, or like mid 90s when I started mm -hmm. rapping, um, I was in school. So I sounded like what I was listening to. I sounded like Q-Tip right, and right. CL Smooth and, Damn, and Guru funny, yeah. from Gangstar. You mix those three, and that was how I sounded. Because who was I? That I was, was nobody your, yet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Influence. So I think we all go through that. Mm -hmm. You got to find your voice. But you find your voice through your inspirations. Yeah. You go, like, who inspires me? And for a time, you know, you emulate them, but you can't if you can't help but kind of become you. Like mm -hmm. right now, I still draw inspirations from music. And if I go, I want to do a song like that, I already know that I know who I am. So Correct. even if I was like, I'm gonna bite that, yeah. it's still not gonna sound like that. It's gonna just inspire me to do my thing, you know. Yeah. And I think that's what happens. That you was grow. exactly yeah. what it was. It was just kind of figuring out my thing yeah yeah me. yeah like because yeah. i didn't think i was good enough because it's like man i'm listening to these these are legendary radio personalities like yeah of course so then it was like shout out to julio g man julio kevin nash as well like those were my first experiences in the beat and both of those dudes really just gave me to being like man just be you bro yeah just i mean that's you, it. like and whatever don't try to sound like whatever just talk yeah, it's so funny. I mean, that's it seems like such simple advice. Mm -hmm. And like in this era, in this world now of like personal development, all business growth, life hacks, all of this, right. it still boils down to do authenticity and just being you, man. Yeah. And for me, like my journey in this thing, even in L.A. Symphony and doing a solo career now, it that's what, been one of the hardest challenges. I mean, I, I think I barely became the full authentic me like 2013. It's so weird because you have all these people around you, these some of the perceived like fans you think that you're you got to do a certain mm -hmm. thing, yep. a certain way for people. But I've had my most successful release was last year and it was me just at a place where I don't, I don't, I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to be nobody else or try right. to fit into somebody's mold or do music how people think I should do music. And when I did that, all of a sudden it was like, whoa, I'm back. Right. I felt last year, I, I had never felt this, but with my solo career, I felt like the days of LA Symphony, the big days of LA Symphony, I was experiencing oh. those last year as a solo artist. And that was like a real personal goal that I achieved because of just learning how to be authentic, yeah. just like what you're saying, man. I think, you know, it, yeah. it's really huge. That was it. Like, I, I think that was 
without knowing that, that would have just probably deaded my whole radio situation because I'd have been trying to be or sound like or, you know, and then it was like, oh. I could just be me. Yeah. Well, I love this music thing, and all right, bet. You know. So, what was it? Were you when you were like you were interning and you were doing this, and you you get that two a.m. hour? Like, all right, we're gonna Man. give you forty five minutes on air. I was two forty six. It wasn't yeah. even on the air. It was like run the board, like oh, play boy. the music. You know, be up there. This was before automation kicked into radio stations and yeah. all that. So, it was really that sit there, run the board. I remember taking my sister up to, to the beat and, and having to run the board yeah. like midnight to 6 a.m. on Christmas. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, but, but, bro, there wasn't nowhere else I wanted to be. You had to do it, yeah. I was with it. Like, okay, cool. I yeah. got to run the board. All right, cool. I got to be there at midnight. All right. I, you know, our, our first big DJ was Jay Boogie, and he was working with Power 106 at that time. And I remember he used to, all, like, he would get those. He wanted to be an on-air DJ. He got much more success with Nickelodeon and all kinds of TV success. Right. But he, he wanted to be in that place, too. And he used to get, like, a mix show, like, an hour at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever. And he used to ask different ones of us to go with him, like, to help, like, write down what he played. You know, all the things you have to do behind scenes. So I got a little bit of that. I used to be so sleepy in there. And he'd be spinning completely, like, awake, excited, just like yourself. There's no place he wanted to be. And I'd be in there, like, falling asleep. (laughs) Like, bro, what'd you like? The last song you played, you know, like, all that. But I I understand, like, what that's like. It's that, that genuine passion for doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's I it. mean, and, and what are we doing if we're not like looking for that in our lives? You know, and I think a lot of this stuff is buzzwords, mm-hmm. and and like it's almost cool to be like, yeah, full entrepreneur, dreamer. Now it know, is, pa- yeah. But back then, you know, like for somebody to tell you just be yourself, it's almost like innovate, like really, or like the, people weren't talking about that stuff. Yeah. So where did it come from for you? Like where where did you draw like? How do, it seems like there was this natural because people there's people that move into their 40s, their mm-hmm. 50s even still don't know what they're quote unquote passionate about or what they want to do in life, yeah. and they go through life working these jobs or doing whatever. Like, how did you know? Like, did somebody teach you that, or did you have that in your family? Like, where did that come from? Um, I I genuinely had no option. I flunked out of junior college. I didn't go pro in basketball. What am I doing? You know what I'm yeah. saying? I tried business and finance. I wanted nothing to do with that in school. It. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, well, man, I love this music and hip hop thing. Dang, this radio dude gets to talk to all the people that I listen to. Oh, well, maybe radio. that would. Yeah. yeah. And that was really it. And, and, and when it became radio, it was like, OK, now I can't fail. Right. Because I've already failed at a lot of other stuff. So, so. did you have a sense that there was no option? Yeah. Really? For sure. It was like do or die. Even at the very beginning, like when you were like trying to get those internships, you were like do or die. What else? What else no am I going to do? No plan B, huh? I can't, I can't go pro now. That, that hoop That's day is gone. done. Yep. Okay, bet. Um, this whole school and business and make... Business and finance, bro, to me was money. Right. That was it. So yeah. I was like, that's why I did it. And then it's like zero passion for it. Then it was right. graphic design because I could draw a little bit. So then it was like, no, I doodle. They draw. Right. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. then it was like, dang, where am I going with this? And so radio was like, okay, dude, yeah. you got to crack the code for this one. Or, Well, do you think that that's like, would that be the advice you would give to people is kind of like back yourself into a corner, so to speak, or like give yourself no option? Or Maybe, how, how do you address or that? Or just dive in. I think because you know what I will say about you before you answer the rest mm-hmm. of the way is that you did try a lot of stuff. You tried basketball. Mm-hmm. You tried going to school. You tried working in business and finance. You tried some things mm-hmm. and found out what you didn't like, and that helped you to know what you did like. You tried. You found out you weren't passionate about this or whatever. Mm-hmm. You might have been. You might have been passionate about ba- right. basketball. You might have been passionate about some of those things. But so. Do you think it's a combination of the two? Like, because you have to find yourself. Like, got to find it. You've got to, I think, you know, it, it really is just fail a lot and, yeah. and let that happen. I think, you know, fail. Okay, fail. Let me not say fail. You you win or you learn. I don't think that's you lose. That's a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. You know, like if you, if you, the, the loss is if you caught nothing off of it and it was just all bad. Right. That's like, when you lose. I refuse that, bro. I'm a bad loser. Yeah. And so it's just like anytime I caught an L, I had to get a few notes from what went wrong for that L to happen. I always remember when Jay-Z and Nas battled and 
Most people probably said Nas won. I mean, I don't know where you fall on that side of the yeah, coin. Yeah, I'm going with Ether too. <laughs> yeah, but I always thought Jay-Z wins overall because he wins in life. He wins in career. Mm -hmm. He won in all that. But I agree. I got to go with Ether. But I remember, like, when The Gift and the Curse came out, there was a line on there that said, like, he was basically saying, I won the battle because even though I lost, I learned and, and came bigger on the other side, which was so true. Mm-hmm. And he ended up signing Nas, so who ended up on top? You For know sure. what I'm saying? So, and now anyway. if you look back reflectively on both, they yeah. both won. They both won. And you know who won the most? Hip-hop. 100%. Because two huge like pop rappers battling in the true school sense on on record? Yeah. Dude, hip-hop won. And it was a good look. Yeah. And now you got one of them in businesses and the other one in his own established businesses. And yeah. I know Nas got... Uh, I think he's part of like Harvard curriculum, if I'm not mistaken. That's crazy, now. man. Yeah. Nas, bro. Yeah, so anyway, I'm sorry, go on. Nah, then, so uh, that was, um, I don't know where it was at, just the passion of it. Yeah, the passion, and you were talking about um, the, the combination of the idea of no plan B, but it's not because you didn't try a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's because you tried, learned, either right. you won or you learned. And yep. either way, it was it's it's forward in you. There's no going back when you lose. Yeah. And then we talk about that a lot on this podcast and in my life. And there was a long time where I, I stayed in regret. I had a lot of regrets. I was angry right. about a lot of decisions I made during the L.A. Symphony days. I was mm -hmm. very like, what could have been, what should have been, why I should have got this and this and that and the other. And it wasn't until I started learning this lesson that we're talking about that those things weren't failures. Like, what did I learn from right. it? And when I stopped and thought about what I learned from it, I started applying it. And then all of a sudden, doors started opening again. Things started happening. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing growth. And so I, I, you know, we talk about that a lot because I'm, I'm pretty much an open book, yeah. you know, ah. pun intended. I'm an open book and I give them my recipes, homie. And that's what this is all about right. doing the show. And so, um, yeah, that's a huge lesson for people. I, I think. think there's something too when I don't know what it is. It's just that, that thing in you that, you know, this is what you got to do. Yeah. Like you knew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you're yeah. making music, like it was like, for me, it was like, nah, dude, this is your thing. Yep. Yeah, this is, it is. You, this is really what you're going to do. It like. can frustrate your loved ones sometimes, but I mean, it's sort of like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What else? Yeah. And I understand that feeling like, and there's been so many times when like you don't, when I, I think that's what people need to understand too. Like there's so many times when you don't make money. Right. And my career personally has gone up and down where like I've been doing great then doing terrible, then doing in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it go, and you just have to, if this is what you love to do, you ride the waves and you yeah. do what you got to do. And um, I think that's an important thing too, because in the low times, you can feel like a failure. You can't feel like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Screw this. I want to give up. I'm done with this. Um, and, it, and again, it's it, you have to go back to that initial vision. And I think you definitely had a vision for radio, because for me, knowing you back then, I didn't know about all that business. Of fine. I didn't know about none right. of that. When I think of Chris Lowe's, I think of radio, period. Right. <laughs> so to me, your brand was set back then. That's dope. So what, how was it? Like, did you have like a real big vision? Like, because you were looking up to the PJ Butters and all that. Mm -hmm. Were you like, that's going to be me? Um, I saw like what PJ did with the bootlegs thing. Uh, Julio G, West Side Radio, 9 o'clock bomb. DJ Melody, 7 o'clock menu mix. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing all of these things dominique Dupree, yeah. street science dope yeah uh dread scott barbara barabino get up stand up um krs1 temple of hip-hop so i'm seeing these things and at that time in radio there were those specialty shows yeah where you could do something special like fidel had the seditious beats yeah um so there were those things and that was really what it was for me and i think college radio man at pcc was my funnest like experience to it because it was a little more free what did i call it the urban lounge was the name of my show oh nice did which, we ever go to that because that sounds familiar yeah I feel like we went to that for sure that sounds sure. really familiar and i can't even the see little, why you wouldn't it's have like a little dungeon there. it was like the little dungeon basement studio yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone was in there at some yeah point. yeah because that sounds the urban lounge sounds so familiar yes anyway, and it on. was and it was really just me biting the cool name of the Maxwell Urban Hang Suite. Yeah. And being like, yo, I got to think of the cool name. And it so is it was a like cool the name. Urban Lounge. And yeah. then it was, you know, but, but radio to me was this really cool theater of the mind to where you could create a whole universe sonically where nobody's seeing into this room because this is before cameras, before yeah. YouTube, before phones, you yeah. know what I'm saying, like yeah. this. And, and so it was this 
I, I love the theater of the mind. I love the ability to create something with just your voice and these speakers and this music and 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 capture something that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. No, it's so true, man. I mean, it, we're just. I mean, it's like almost like saying the same thing over and over again. But it is true. Like when you catch the thing that you're passionate about and you start catching that vision for it. I mean, you're right. It's it's like it, it is a love. I was kind of like. Uh, I was actually writing some lyrics this morning. And I was saying, like, you know, you you uh, the thing you love the most, you give your most uh, attention to, right? You give your most focus. Mm-hmm. But the 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 other things you love a great deal in your life don't go unnoticed. So what I was thinking, and I haven't finished the verse, but it's like, I love my family the most, right? And there's nothing I wouldn't replace. There's nothing that could replace that, like mm-hmm. whatever. But this music, man, it's like. It is a love too, and it's just not going away. Like yeah. so, my like when you find that thing, it's like you you do whatever you can do to to keep it a part mm-hmm. of your life. You do whatever you can do to to make it work. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's always a way because we have our core values. Like like um like my like I said, my core my number one core value is family, right? But my number two is doing what I love for a living. Right. And and, and I think the number one has to just go ahead and accept the number two because if they don't it's there's it's just not going away you know what i mean and and i think it's it's important i don't even know how i start saying no. that but it, well i think i think we're in a different day too to where if you're if you love something it's a lot more easy to make money doing what you love yeah than it's ever been yeah 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 you know n- maybe not necessarily if if you're trying to be a rapper and make lots of money rapping you might not do that, but if you're a rapper, you can make enough money to live. Yeah, it's true. You know, doing X, Y, and Z, or you have these different places. It's not just yeah. the beat back in the day. The beat and power was still the dance station. Yeah. So there was no other hip hop station. So that Very was true. it. You yeah. know, so now then it became the beat and yeah. power. So then there was two. You know yeah. what I mean? So now it's whatever it is, and you've got more outlets online. Very true. I mean, and and I think you're right. It's like, uh, you can just do it nowadays. Mm-hmm. Like you just whatever you want to do, you can do it. And also, I think it, it, it's uh, the way you know. It's kind of trendy to say like I'm like I'm a rapper and I'm an entrepreneur, right? And I'm a businessman, and I'm I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman, and all yeah. that. You know, like yeah. it's kind of trendy or whatever. But it still is true you know i mean like i think a defining moment when i you know it's part of it is having your vision but also it's like it sometimes you have to expand your vision or you have to look at what it is you are and realize that you're probably a lot more than what so like for a long time i'll give you an example for a long time i was like yo i'm a rapper i'm I'm, i rap but i wanted to act i wanted to um i always wanted my career like common basically that was part of my vision So yeah, I'm talking like around 2000, 2001 Common. So he was already barely bridging the gap of acting. But anybody who was like rapping and acting, like I wanted that career. But I was so focused on I'm a rapper. And I didn't broaden and say, you know, it wasn't until like years later I started to identify myself as an entertainer. And then all of a right. sudden I realized, oh, there's a ton of stuff I can do. So today I got a podcast. I now have a radio show, which I want to talk oh, to you about. Oh, all right. I rap. I do coaching and consulting. I'm becoming a speaker. Like, there's so many things. But back then, I was like, I'm a rapper. And my mind was saying, like, I'm going to rap. I'm going to blow up as a rapper. Then I'm going to go be an actor. So peep this out, bro. While I was doing that, I had this girlfriend who was trying to be an actress. Right? So she signed me up for central casting, which is like, whatever, whatever. And she would, she would, uh, I never once, you you used to have to call the number or you, I think you could email or whatever Uh and find out what jobs are there. And it was like, just background is crap. No. Crap work. It's like just standing there. Yeah. You know, you're a human plant. Get paid for all day. Yeah, yeah. And get paid uh, like 50 bucks a day or whatever. Beat her all day. I I never called her, but she signed me up because she's like, I was rapping for a living, but you know, I wouldn't mind making a little extra money. For sure. I never called it. She would call for me, right? And she'd be like, hey, I found a job for you. Do this. And I'm like, all right, whatever. And I would go do it. And I kid you not, every time I would show up on set, and I'm not lying about this, man, the PAs on set and everybody, they would, they would, I would be way in the back with all the background workers. They would say, you, come here. They would pull me out and put. I would move like up. Like one time I did this like fair commercial and I was like, they were going to put me on a Ferris wheel. I would have not even be seen in the commercial. Right. You, come here. I got moved up to a hot dog cart. Then another PA will come on. You come here. So I kept getting like favor in that world, right? That's dope. I ended up so I was up with like the principals. They had to bump me up. They had to get you know 
give me more money, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't do nothing, right? Then they started calling me from Central Casting for acting gigs, and all my actor friends were getting angry at me because they had never heard of this. This never happens. They're like, we're calling every day, and they're calling you? I'm like, yeah. And, you know, like, getting to SAG, you got to get vouchers and all this. Yeah. So they're, they're, I had, like, I think to this day I got, like, six vouchers, this and that and the other. They were struggling. You have to get three to get in the yeah. union. They were struggling. They were literally, my friends were literally angry at me. I believe that. But, <laughs> listen, so all this positive energy towards acting, right? And uh, I'm like, but, yeah, I'm a rapper. And I didn't put any energy back. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, but if I would have defined myself in the correct way, if I would have stopped and said, let me evaluate my goals, my dream, my vision, and really focus in on, on the overall goal, I would have said, let me get an agent. Let me uh, yeah. go be Don't inside. get in the way of, of another win for yourself. Exactly. And who's to say that that wasn't my path? Like, let me go act, get right. on a show, and then what? I could have been Drake. You still make Before music. Drake. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Drake went that path, right? So what I'm saying is, like, I, I limited myself. Mm -hmm. I had limited vision. And I think, like, um, in this day and age, it's it's very um, celebrated to have bigger vision. Um, and it, it took a lot to, for me to get to that. But, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you can relate to that, but I, I think you're doing so much more than radio now. And, and was there ever a transition? Was there ever a thought, like, I could do more? Or was it always in you, like, I'm going to do a lot of things? Um, Man, I, I never really overthought it, I guess, like... I, I wanted to get into radio because I needed a job more than anything. And I didn't want a poop butt job. So yeah, it was I like, believe. okay, I was working at the parks and rec. So I loved working with kids, but working two and a half hours a day and five hours on a Saturday and Sunday, if I'm lucky to get those extra hours, yeah, that's barely gas in the car. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's just like, uh, radio worked, but I don't know. I, I mean, I, to be honest, like, I still don't even think of myself as, like, a radio guy like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But it's so good. We that's do. why when you say that, yeah, we it's do. so cool. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. Because I just, but, yeah, outside of how I just see myself as Chris that worked at the teen center, coached kids, and did radio. Yeah. And, and now it's kind of just liking to do whatever. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel. Um, well, I mean, even online, though, you're Chris Lowe's media, which is much broader mm -hmm. of a term nowadays that can incorporate a lot of stuff. Right. Man. And so, I mean, tell us about that. Like, your YouTube game is getting pretty tight. And, like, how did all that start? Yeah, that was, I mean, man, the YouTube really was a couple things. Um, one, my enjoyment of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I was, I started noticing I'm consuming a lot more YouTube and, and seeing yeah. stuff on there. And then really being like, man, dude, like you were the first radio DJ to put an interview on YouTube. Like now really? it's the yeah. norm yeah. of radio interviews. Everyone Absolutely. puts their thing on YouTube. Breakfast Club, all that. Like, all yeah. of that. You know what I mean? But in 05, 06, it was just my videos. Really? That you found. That's dope, man. So yeah. you were on the forefront of that. That's yeah. So, so cool. it was like, okay, cool. And, and now radio's been great to me. And I was like, you know. Nobody ever shared with me outside of like Julio G, Dominique De Prima, Kevin Nash. A, just a handful of people, you know, yeah. that really looked out for me. Um, everybody else was pretty greedy with their info yeah. and wanting to share anything. Yeah. They didn't want to share yeah. a thing. Like it was, you were going to take their job. Exactly. So I think it was just kind of like, well, you know, I just made a personal commitment to really myself, man. And I've said it out loud to hold myself accountable, I guess, but to really try to give more in 2017 intentionally yeah. than I've ever given in my life. Like, so to really just, whether it's talking to people, um, commenting back on a post, um, the YouTube channel happened because it's like, I got 20 plus years of experience in this field. Yeah. Let me share it. Yeah. Um, let me go see the schools and let me really give to them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Let me yeah. get a school tour going now with the Work Smart School Tour and really do it myself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? With my partners, with the iDream Society yeah. and, and do that. Let's get this Digital Dreamers Academy together. You know what I mean? And really do it. And it's just kind of becoming almost a challenge for myself, really, man, to see like, all right, Los, you know a lot of cool different things, but... How can you d give and and and, yeah. and do right by everything you know? You know, and it was yeah. like I work at a radio station. It was winter time. Yo, man, let's see if we could get some socks together for homeless. Yeah. And we were able to do it and get yeah, socks. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like there's so much power if you just do it. 
I, I, I fully, fully agree with that. And like I, I was just talking earlier uh, to somebody, there's a, a whole idea, like they say, like it's uh, analysis paralysis. So like people overthink stuff all the time and then they don't move. They man. don't make that move, you know? And uh, sometimes it is a old Nike, man. You got a Nike this world, right? Yeah, just real talk. Right? Like it's been, and I was, I could, I could genuinely say, could, like that was the one thing for me, bro. Like I think it was my fear of, I don't know what other people thought or not being able to pull it off or yeah. not being able to pull it off the way I see it in my head. So all of those things, dude, used to really mess with me, man. And it would yeah. just have me second guessing myself. And I'd be like, ah, hold up. Hold of course. Don't do we it, all go through that. Up. Yeah. But then it was like, but then came that point for me where I'm like, well, I'm not trying to impress nobody. Yeah. Like, I mean, I do care, but I don't care. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, if you don't real. like it, then it's not for you. Exactly. But exactly. I do care because I want I, I want somebody to be able to take something away from what I'm sharing. Yeah. So there's the part of me that cares, but the other part that completely doesn't. You know what's crazy? And I, I talk to these, talk to rappers, producers, all these people, and it, like, you really, truly, truly don't need everybody. Like, you don't actually want everybody, you Correct. know, like, you, you know, and going back to being your authentic self, like that, that's also why it's so important to be authentic, because there's plenty of people just like you that will ride with you mm -hmm. and you'll be all right. Money wise, career wise, everything wise. You know, I was tripping like um, I just did uh, a radio show that was on last night and we the topic was parental advisory. Okay. So we're talking about like censorship yeah. and stuff like that and like radio. Funny that we're talking about a lot of radio radio edits and how funny some radio edits right, are. Right, you know, right. like this, this thing sounds like an instrumental practically. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? With ad ever, Instrumental yeah, with ad -libs. Explosive by yeah. Dr. Dre. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like half inter instrumental. Gin and Jews. Yeah, there's a few. But as I was kind of pulling songs and like doing a little research for it, I was like, yo, there are so many countries in the world where like Eminem is com all his music is completely banned. Yeah. And Lil Wayne too, complete like that was just one straw that broke the camel's back. There, all right, we're out, and they just tap out. But I don't think Eminem cares, man. You know why? Because he's like a gazillionaire. He's doing all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I think that's okay. And like he's always been like one that's tapped into just told. I mean, talk about being yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. he was nuts when he came out. Like mm -hmm. stuff he was talking, nobody heard talking like that. But he didn't care. Like, he made a lot of people mad, but yeah. he made enough people happy Correct. that it made him rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always tell guys, like, you, you could, if you build your fan base to, like, 10,000 people that are always going to buy your record, and people will come and go, but that 10,000 mm -hmm. is always there, oh, man. You're good. You're good for life. Yeah. You are good for life. For you know sure. what I mean? For sure. And uh, so I, I think that's a that's a value, valuable, like, nugget because you're right because Thinking about other people's feelings is always going to hold you back, mm -hmm. you know? And what's the difference? Opinions, you know, Whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and to me, it's like if you don't like something you do, you can change that. Of course. And also what I was going to say about quote-unquote failures or like failing in front of people. And a lot of times people, are, they're not afraid of failure. They're afraid of failing in front of other Correct. people. But especially nowadays in, in our like fast-paced, like everything's new. You know, you see big major artists do real bad stuff and then the next day just give to a charity or do something and that's it you can paint the picture however you want it you can fail and be like yeah i meant to do that because this i meant so i could show you guys right, right. so and now we doing this or whatever and you just create your own thing man. and i'll be real i'm a bigger fan of the hater now yeah i'm just a super big fan of haters like because they intrigue me to no end really because now it's like you put something out I like to see the comment like, ah, you suck. You da 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 da. Huh. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay, first of all, why? Yeah, yeah. Now I want to know why did I suck? Yeah. So I'm going to go over to your page. Okay, Tommy2117, yeah. you got 60 friends and yeah. you just hated on me. And then you went, oh, hold on, let me see. You went over here and you were hating on the guy who hosts the other news channel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. And you went and talked something crazy to the other rapper over here. Oh, so you're that guy. Yeah, yeah. So you're the guy that lurks around and just likes to talk exactly. reckless to people. Well, cool, man. But so now I'm, this whole time I've been fearful mm -hmm. of Tommy, whatever that has, yeah. whatever friends and that. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's how we get so fearful of yeah. that guy. 
I know. He's just some dude, some nerd on a computer. Come on, bro. Yo, like. You know what? And it's so crazy, too. And I, I actually, when, I, when I'm coaching and consulting people, I tell them, like, your goal should be see how many haters you can get. Because that is an indicator of success. Mm-hmm. When you start pulling away from the pack and doing something that other people want, and especially tapping into your just being you and being original or whatever, that the haters is a sign. I'm t- and, and here's the real science, too, something that I picked up lately. Just I forget where I saw that. It was like a week or so ago. It's funny you said that. It was they go from ignoring you completely yep. to um, laughing at you mm-hmm. to hating you to loving you. Yeah, it's true. That's and it's, true. It's, if you look at all of them, like even the Kim Kardashians and all that, it kind of goes that way. Yeah. They ignore, then they laugh, then they hate you, then they love you. Then they love you. And somebody like her... Still has millions of haters too. Do you think she cares? Not at all. Not at all, because there's so many more that love her. Look, man, I'm telling you right now, like lately, I've been getting some more trolls, like, you know, talking a lot of crazy stuff. I I know. (laughs) I'm happy. I've been talking about them all, like, for for the last month. I'm like, guess what? Trolls, I got more of them. I'm going to start telling them, I'm going to just start reading the emails I get, (laughs) man. I get, you know what I mostly get is a lot of people, like, hating on uh like they just the, you know people get stuck in their certain styles of music or certain whatever like mm-hmm. and i grow as an artist right and they'll be like man i like your, you know we you used to do it better i'm like cool those albums still exist go, go listen them. to them yeah and leave me alone because i gotta do what i gotta do now For you sure. know what i'm saying but i get you know different things you mm-hmm. know but to me i'm like all right that's good you know because yeah. it means I'm, I'm i'm not only does it mean that i'm i'm becoming more relevant or more successful but it also means that my authentic voice is getting more and more fine-tuned correct because there's you could be like do people hate mother Teresa. people hate the greatest like the kindest people, person yeah like the people mother, that you yeah. think are like the most whoever in your mind sure. is like the sure. greatest person people, they there's plenty of haters people hated martin luther king you know what I'm saying? People hated all the greats, Correct. all our favorites. Correct. You know what I'm saying? That's the true. go-to people that we look to as like, you know, they hate Jesus. Mm-hmm. They hate like, who's the it top? Don't matter. Yeah. They hate them. Yeah. You know, there's everybody has haters, yeah. right? So then you're just putting yourself in good company. And I think it's too like, uh, once I just really came to a space of like, man, why do people spend time hating? Like, yeah. I've never really been a hater, dude. Like, anytime yeah. someone's like, hey, bro, so and so doing that. Oh man, cool. That's yeah. dope. Good for them. Yeah. You I've know, been a hater. I'm not going to lie. Word? Big time. Oh, sure. I mean, we LA Symphony, we're, it's kind of a joke with us, though, but we have a, we have a song called Haters. You might have even heard it. It was from a, a, something we did, like an early album, and we are just talking about that because, you know, yeah. like, we, we were haters, but it kind of is what made our music good because we'd hate on each other. But I like, get it, too. Yeah, yeah. I get and I get it. A little more of a joke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I think being positive, like, the energy you put out is the energy you're going to get back. Yeah. So if you, if you, I always tell people that too, like you can build your career with this example right here. If you woke up in the morning and decided you're going to go outside and just smile at people, you go out, smile at 10 people, you're going to get at least nine smiles back at least. And what you put out, it's such a basic example, but it's really true. Like what you put out is going to come back to you. Mm-hmm. Not everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm not guaranteeing everybody's going to smile at you, but that's not your thing. That's their right. thing. What you put out is going to come back. So why would I go start hating on fools, talking? Because, you know. And it might not come back from that person you no, smile at. No, no. It's just the energy you put out. I do that you know? all the time, yeah. bro. Like, I'm weird like that. Like, yeah. I go and I smile at people and say good morning to people yeah. all day. Like, yeah. I start. And, and it's funny because I've done the math. I don't get like, but maybe one. Yeah, yeah. That smiles or says hello back. But you don't know what difference you made in their lives. Correct. Beyond that. But I love the reaction it leaves them when they're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and they I, almost I, don't I know. know, like, oh. I like pulling people out of there, like, because we get into, like, a sort of a fog or just, a, like, mm-hmm. we're so into our routine. For sure. Like, I'll go, like, the car wash or whatever, and I just start talking my stuff, like, like over. Like, what up? Like, almost like I know them and stuff, start joking around. Oh, that's, uh, that's funny or whatever. And they're like, oh, shoot. You know, but I see it does, mm-hmm. you know, change. And it's almost like... I, that's just me, first of all. But then it's like yeah. practice too. It's like yeah. there's simple ways that people can practice things that they're uncomfortable with. That's like safe. That's not going to be detrimental. Yeah. That might be some like they might be scared to, to do radio or just do a podcast or scared to do something on stage. Well, just do it at the liquor store when you're buying a soda, like, yeah. and just see how it feels and see what kind of reaction you get. Maybe you are a comedian, like. And you're scared to go on stage and tell jokes. Just say it in passing yeah. to one of your homies or to yeah. somebody you don't know and just see what they do. 
Maybe they'll laugh. Past it. Yeah. Maybe you learn that that's a whack joke. Maybe you get the laugh and it gives you the confidence and you take it to the comedy store or whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shout like, out to a few of my friends that are comedians. B Uno in yeah. particular. That brother right there, man. He used to always test stuff around at the house parties or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's cracking jokes. I'm like, I know what you're doing, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was dope because it was yeah, a great way to, you know, exactly. in a room full of people, you're going to see what works. I like comedians and rappers. And there's always been that thing. Like, it's so weird. It's almost like, uh, like dance for me monkey like rappers is always like oh you rap spit something yes, why no. man why yeah, like, you a singer right oh now? can you sing something like yeah why would you ask us to do that it's like oh you're a plumber you can you fix some pipes we just want to watch we want to watch you fix some pipes like <laughs> i have a problem with my toilet back here yeah bro. yeah it's like you don't ask the normal person to do stuff That's like funny. that so it's always funny but i think comedians go through that too like oh where tell me a joke it just kind of doesn't work like that like you know it's so weird be funny you know? yeah yeah like how am I supposed to be funny <laughs> but anyway um, let's get back so you, you touched on some of the stuff like your the, the I dream and stuff like that Why, tell us a little bit about what, how, what you're doing with that because I find that really interesting I mean um, know. man thank you dude it was it was really just a thought like I my dream was different obviously like than the regular 9 to 5 rate you know college yeah wasn't my thing so i just kind of wanted to make this the i dream society was like for people that dream and they dream different right yeah, that yeah, was yeah. really it i had no other idea of how this is going to work or what this is going to be and then it became okay well i dream i went this way okay well let me share then from this experience yeah for other people that might share that same dream uh-huh. And that's really what it was. Digital Dreamers Academy was the first where we, you know, showed kids uh, with Apple. Apple instructors showed them Logic and Final Cut. Yeah. 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 And then we uh, had Adam Levine's artist, Polyay involved. And the kids got to actually create social media content for that's her. Incredible. Yeah. Learn about social media and how to use what on what platform. We had different speakers coming in um, to talk to them that have been doing, whether it's music or film or television or uh, behind the scenes of labels, come and just share, you know, real life stuff with them and and grab their questions and feel their questions and answer their questions with real answers and not the, well, you know, just yeah. keep trying hard, you yeah, know, but yeah, it, was, yeah. it was just very real, man. And that's dope. Man. That's, what an opportunity for those kids, man. <sighs> Is that are you gonna is that gonna be an ongoing thing that you keep doing? Um, it's gonna definitely come back in the fall. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. so great, man. Yeah, I mean, is there any anywhere that people can go to find out about that, or is it specific? Um, it's the I Dream Society uh, Facebook. You could just plug Type it on in. in. Yeah, 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 I Dream Society, and then get more info. Because the there might be a lot there. of people that will want their kids involved in mm-hmm. something. Like that. And right now we're doing a school tour. It's still like about another. I don't know when this is gonna air, but it's like another week or so that we're gonna keep uh, getting submissions from schools oh, cool. before we lock the dates in. So if it's a high school or a junior high school, all the info is there. Um, oh, just shoot a message to email idreamsociety at gmail um, and let us know if you want us to come out to the school because summer's coming, bro, but it was like I wanted to go in specifically before summer to be like, look, you're going to have three months. Three months or two months or whatever, you're going to yeah, be off. Yeah. You have a dream. You want to be a rapper. You want to be a producer. You want to be a photographer. You want to be a, 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 yeah. a, a, a artist that that paints. You want to be whatever you want to be. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a lot of time right now. Yep. So I don't think you're aware of what you have available here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's really crazy, just yeah. going to be that, man. Like you could take photos on here. You can use this. Get their mind frame correct going into the summertime. Yeah. So they could be productive with their summer no if doubt. they got a dream that they're trying to knock out. Absolutely. I think that's huge. And it's huge for kids, too, because they don't you know the ones that do realize they start making some of these kids get to be millionaires and they're 15 years old correct and um it's good to instill that belief in them that that could be them you know it might not be millionaires but you can do something amazing and you're 15 years old you're 16 years old you know yeah i tell my daughter that all the time my stepdaughter i'm like you know let's start a business i'll do i'll do a business with you we're gonna do like an e like an ebay you know mm-hmm. she's interested in clothing and awesome. things i said oh, great we'll go we'll go buy Correct. and flip buy and flip yeah let's set a monetary goal how much you want to make this year and like because i'm trying to teach her that like correct. do it now correct you can do it now you don't have to like go to college and graduate let's make some money i'll show you how to do it yeah. i make money i know how to do it let's yeah. do it you know what i'm saying yeah. so i think that's really great man and um so before before we get out of here i want to do two things with you all right one um, I mean, I, we could stay here all day because I feel like you got a plethora. I want to keep picking your brain. <laughs> but a lot of my listeners are musicians, rappers, whatever. 
um, and maybe some have aspirations to be on pop radio or radio mm -hmm. or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. Um, but a lot of them, they just want a career. They see the careers happening on YouTube, on Instagram. Uh, they, they see this independent hustle. A lot of them just want that and they're cool with that. But coming from like your broad range of radio experience from the top all the way down, if you were just talking to the average dude who's just trying to get it popping on YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever, whatever, like let's say you were going to be, I don't know, their manager or you were going to consult them okay. like for a session, like what would you tell them to do from beginning to like career? Like, this is their, their goal is to be in radio? No, no. Just from your perspective as a radio person, their goal is to have a career in music. Career in music. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I it doesn't have to be pop radio. It doesn't have to be that. Just, yeah, career. Career in music. Yeah, yeah. Um, First, let me encourage you with there's a lot of different careers in music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you, you've you gotten to see it too. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you definitely. know what I'm saying? Like, from the, the nuance of how there were positions that were there that are not such yeah. as A&Rs and different things like that of yeah. that nature. Um, but there's so many places you can go to find work in this music industry that I would hate to only encourage people to try to rap or sing or produce. Right. You know, there's so much more. You can have your own recording house. You can, you can if you know a lot of creative people, you could start a business by renting out a space and building a studio yeah and having them come give you twenty dollars or thirty dollars or whatever you know what i'm saying yeah. and yeah, you yeah, have yeah. money coming that way you can um watch people online you can become social media for a record label yeah um you can do social media for artists or an artist you yeah. can help them campaign that way um the business of music is huge yeah, you know, true. then you've got different outlets um, like Dash or or XM or Sirius or Spotify or TuneIn or, you know, those are so many different places. Yeah, I think for you, it would be or for whoever it is that that wants this this job. What do you want to do? Like, yeah. what do you really, really where do you find your niche in it? Yeah. Where, where are your strongest skills? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And find that. And then. And then go in. I believe you'll be 100% successful once you really clearly see it. Yeah. I could say that, like, before the Digital Dreamer Academy, before the school tour, I just had this cloudy idea yeah. of it. It was like, I knew I wanted it, and I, I was like, oh, I want to help, and I want Yeah. But then it starts to really get clear. Yeah. And, that's a, and when you really, really want it, it'll get clear. Getting drunk and high If I only had a brain The heart, the nerve It's them self-esteem demons 
demons that live in negative words You was born for a reason, for you there's a plan Don't leave it up to chance and say it's in God's hands Jason was in there already, beneath the certainties buried Over the shoulder they carry shame and everything scary Very awkward and heavy, far from unordinary Found a woman and man, insecurities very You will find similarities, you will find a difference You will find your strength in someone else's weakness See and believe this, life has missing pieces I exist like you, just for different reasons Got it? All the antics, you ain't young anymore All the goals in your life have been thrown out the door And replaced by circumstance, now a victim of regret Still living in the past, you need to move to the next Open your eyes, look inside, grab a hold of what's there You got talents and gifts that can't nobody compare Because you ain't him or her, you can only be you Do your best, nothing less until yourself be true Get it right, get it Get it, got it Yeah, that's very true. Um, and that's, again, when I'm talking to people, you know, kind of coaching them, I, I always, the first question I start with literally is, what do you want? Correct. And I say, don't answer that right away. I don't want to hear your, you know, I want you to really think about it. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about if you want a cheeseburger or a Subway. I'm talking about what, that's a big question yeah. that most people actually don't really answer for themselves. And they go through life. Working a job, just doing whatever. And they never actually said, what do I want? Like, ultimately, right. what do I want? It's a huge question. Um, so, yeah, I think that's great, man. I think that's yeah. and, it, and it is good for people to know that there's different things to do. Again, like me, I had to identify myself as something else, and it mm-hmm. allowed me to do so much more. And I have so many more opportunities that came from that. And you know what, bro? Like, I've never been a fan of labels. Mm-hmm. I've always hated it. Like, you know, it was like, I think even even all the way back to being a kid and, and going to church and being called Christian. And then you see the other crazy Christian dude that's on the corner that's yelling and And you're like, I'm not that dude. I'm, like, I'm not that guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. like, Nobody so likes that guy. Yeah, I, so it was always like the the yeah. that part of a label thing to me. Yeah. And then it's like, I agree. you know, even my just me being brown and it was like, oh, well, are you black or you're Mexican? Are you just you're, tell them you're the you brown the, Dan the bomber? Are you the, you're the brown Dan <laughs> That's all they need you know, to know. Every label, yo, I just never liked it. You're the radio yeah, yeah. guy. You know, man, I do other things other than yeah, radio. Yeah. Yo, like, why am I, you know, or yeah, yeah. whatever it was, I was just never a fan of that. And I think that's why I've just been able to maneuver and do whatever. Cause I've never really attached right. me, Chris yeah. Lowe's to I'm Chris Lowe's radio. Right. You know what I mean? Like media was that cool or word to me to where I'm like, oh, I like media. everything within this yeah, realm it, of media. It, again, that's like me changing from saying I'm a rapper to I'm an entertainer because it allowed me to mm-hmm. feel free to do so many more things. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think that's really good, man. All right. So before we get out of here, bro, this is what I want to ask you. I just started I, last night was my 10th episode of my new hey. radio show. It's called Stereotypes. I put it up on the podcast feed too, so people really love that. I'm on sat- I'm on uh, internet radio. Dope. Um, and I'm having a blast. Sick, I, didn't, out, I didn't bro. know. I didn't yeah. know they just offered it to me. Dope. You know, the radio station started. So you want to show? I said sure. Man, you've been a character. And man, I just pushed record one. and just started doing. And all of a sudden, these weird ideas start coming <laughs> to my brain. Like, and it's been a lot of fun, right? But I have I I don't know what I'm doing. That's the I'm best. I'm having a great time. That doing means it. that means it's, you're I'm right on So point. much fun, bro. Now you're now you're my freaking you're coaching me right now, man. Okay. You're my, you give me that give me that radio wisdom, bro. Radio what, wisdom. What's your show about? Uh, it's called stereotypes. Okay. And here's my two. I have two taglines. Okay. It goes stereotypes. My type of hype. Stereotypes playing what I like. And so it, part part of what's happened is like. I'm building this thing where I like almost like screw you. I play what I want, but I, you know, I mean, I play what people like. So I say I play old stuff. I play new stuff. I play middle stuff, but I only play hot stuff, you know, but that's, those are like my taglines. What's happened because I didn't really have necessarily a format is that each show ended up forming into like a theme. So like last night 
was uh what did we do last night last night was the parental advisory last week was like playing money songs or we did acronym songs okay. like you know so i don't know why that happened it just and happened. It happened you know what i mean and it went that way and it's having fun and it seems like people like it first couple episodes was like i did i played only people from my label i own a label too that's a whole other thing you know oh. and uh and then i did two episodes on la symphony and then from there i just kept it kept being these like we did dilla we did you know we just oh, do yeah. whatever it's like yeah. so i I don't know. It's just I don't know what my show's about other than what I just told you. I'm going to say this, man, like cuz the the commercial radio is just a whole different monster because right. money is involved and all of that. So while you can be creative, yeah. Man, just keep doing your shows that way. Oh, I'll and, say I'll say this. So one of the ways I describe my show is you remember that show Mind of Mencia? Yes. Okay. Not that it's like that show, but just that phrase. Okay. I kind of feel like it's like mind of cookbook, like whatever. I, could, it's like, I, I, I just totally open get it that up from how you describe it. Dump it, it all totally, out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm sorry, I would say be job. that. I yeah. would say be that. Do that, and really just listen. Yeah, listen to what people are really rocking with, because then you're gonna know how to go in yeah. heavier. Don't never try to sound like the cool guy. Just nah, keep right. always being you. Yeah, but I yeah. think that's the. I think you'll be fine, man, because you yeah. already know what you want to do and how you want it to sound. Um, and then it's just really growing with your audience, you yeah, know, yeah. and keeping them because when they're feeling a part of it, they're riding with you. Yeah, I mean, I love the interaction, and and in this world, that's what it's all about now too. It's always about hit me on the socials. Mm-hmm. Let's talk. Yeah. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Blah blah blah. And I love that feedback. I love that. Like yeah. you know, I, I'm I love talking to the people. So yeah. Oh, but you got to grow some facial hair, bro, to be man, on the radio. Man, I know. I don't know if I can, man. My, <laughs> my, I grew out these little baby hairs, man. It's, it's, like, it's not that tight, man. A little man. Fu Manchu got a little Yeah, yeah. Man. I used to pull off the nice little Puerto Rican. <laughs> That's line. right, yeah. I honestly was thinking, I, I kid you not, I was getting ready yesterday and I was shaving. And I shaved only my neck and I was getting ready to trim it and I was going to leave it. I was like, should I do it? And I was like, I'll just cut that. <laughs> Maybe later. But I think I'm going to grow the little, you know, at least my little Puerto Rican line. I know I could grow that in. There you I go. know that comes in. But you all of that. Do it for the culture, bro. Do it for the culture. Hey, yo, all of that that you got going, I don't think I could do that. Man, bro. it's like four years yeah. in the making, bro. And but I, I, don't, like, I don't I'm know. telling you, mine are all spotty and like not tight. I got like holes right here all on my neck. It just doesn't come out tight, man. So I don't know if I could do it. Well, they won't hear it on the radio, so that's good. They won't, man. They might. They might be like, mm, I think this guy's lacking a beard. I got to yeah. I can't listen to this guy. Are you beardless? Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> well, shoot, man. Thanks for being on the show, man. Any last words? And, and you know, where can they get at you? Any like um, last gems man, you want to drop on them? I'll drop say, them gems on yeah, them. Yeah, I'll just you say hit me on YouTube, like yeah, because that's genuinely probably. I mean, I'm on Facebook, and I definitely hit everybody back. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I'm on Snap. Um, but I would say YouTube because okay. I feel like I got if for anybody, any of your, your audience listening, I feel like the stuff I have on, on the YouTube could benefit them the best. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that, that's what I was going to ask. So, um, a lot of my listeners, they're, they're getting introduced to you right now on this show. They're like, who okay. Chris? Cause they're used to like rappers. They know yeah. different people. So they're like, who? So, um, the last thing, so they can hit you on YouTube. That's at. Chris Los Media. Chris Los Media, two okay. O's. Chris L O O S Media, all together. And you, what do you want them to know about you? Like, um, man, just know that I'm a dude that wants to help you make it happen. Because I is. feel like I ain't got anything else that I have to do. I don't have to do anything. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just want to. I love being able to see people go to a better space and That's be in a better place. That's what's up, man. Creating value, man. Right yeah. here with my man Chris Los. Well, there it is, man. There you have it. Guys, thanks for listening, man. You know where to find me at, too, at Cookbook the PR. And if you want to email me, if you want a coaching session, you want a uh, consult, consultation, cookbookings at gmail.com. Hit me up. You guys know the first session is always free. And he will also give you the thin beard line if you need that. I'll teach up. you how to trim that thin <laughs> beard. You know what I'm saying? We're out of here, man. Really, though? 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 Really, though?